Hi, good morning, and welcome to the um, ZP um, vlog. So every week at 8 a.m. London time, we like to do a vlog um, just to kind of you know cover, let's say, news from ZP for this week. And this is that vlog, and I will essentially jump straight into it. So the first um, piece of news is we recently did a um, an e-conference with our colleagues in India, um, really organised by our distributor Technando. And um, there's another there's another conference coming up, um, which we will be also participating in. And um, this one's quite of unusual actually, because um, there's one thing you could say about ZP. You know, we are international, um, but we do have a sort of emphasis on Norway as well, because you know it's unusual for such an international company to be from Norway. But we have, you know, facilities as you know in the UK and Norway. And this conference is actually an Indo-Norwegian. Um, international conference so um, we were reached out to by the conference organizers and we've agreed to participate I must admit we don't have an awful lot of details at this point other than we've been asked to participate but um, it does look interesting we have passed on our logos and hopefully we'll be able to participate in that so it's called the um, Indo-Norwegian International Conference on Functional Materials for Energy Environment and Biomedical Applications so I mean ZP is based on electrochemistry, so that really does mean we do actually have an interest in energy, you know, batteries, capacitors, you know, these are energy applications. Environment is interesting to us. I mean, we have our ZP nitrate sensor. Um, I'll mention it later on. We were just at a water treatment plant this week. So, you know, the environment is, is super interesting to, to us. And of course, you know, ZP, we love medical diagnostics. I just want to say a quick um, hello to Aftab, um, who's online, and nice to see you, Aftab. So as I say, um, we are looking forward to being involved in this conference. I realize that it's actually only a few days away and we haven't had any details from it. So that's curious, but we have um, indicated our interest in participating. Um, some other news from Zimmer and got for this week. Um, whenever people ask me you know, that we would like to join ZP, um, there's actually, USN is a good place to join Zimmer and Peacock. Um, there's, um, I think there's a, a master's there called SSI, Smart Systems Integration. And lots of our, our um, employees come from that master's course. There's also a master's in industry course running. And so um, this week, one of our um, master's in industry students, Hannah, um, was actually wrote an article um, about working at, at ZP. And she was very complimentary because, I mean, I think it is a good place to work. Um, so. That was just nice that one of our um, excellent engineers who's also doing her masters at usn was kind enough to write um, an article about us um, so we we do appreciate um, that so some um, other news from zimmer peacock for this week as i say we always do this you know this vlog at 8 a.m really without hesitation or without delay um every um, sunday 8 a.m now some other news that um, might be really interesting is that ZP um, has developed an app that we really call um, Bake Sense. So what Bake Sense is doing is Bake Sense is it's an unusual let's say application for Zimmer and Peacock. Because, but for ZP, you know, we do believe in basically the, you know the electrochemical biosensor. But we also realise that you know another strong sensing element that we, in the world is obviously the camera on smartphones. So what we've ended up doing is developing a app that can take pictures of a um, of a baked good. In the video that I'm running online, we're actually showing um, the app will actually be used for looking at cookies. And what this means is that a image of a cookie can be taken. So you're in a production line, you're baking this cookie. Now this baking could actually be all sorts of things. You know, it could be sort of you know breads specific to the region but it's really to be used in any for anyone who has a let's say a in this case a baking application but it's much broader than that it can be any kind of image but what's the power of this is this that we can do this work quite quickly because we can actually say send all the data to Julie and use Julie to crunch all the data so we call this application bake sense but it's really a micro application of Julie and so we've written a little app um, it's actually on the um, app store you take a picture of the in this case the cookie 
and the and the user scores it as to whether it's cooked overcooked or undercooked so they're basically teaching the algorithm and then that means that when then when they have their sort of quality technicians taking images the quality manager can have trained the app can have trained the app and then the quality technicians can just take the images and the app will then process the image but it's more powerful than that because it's sending the data to julie they basically have a table of all the results they've ever done let's say and it's all in one place so they have an idea of who took the picture when did they take the picture um what android device were they using at the time and here is the picture and we're analyzing that picture as well and scoring it so i also want to say hi to um vivian um hi vivian i think this is the first time we've seen you um come online for our vlogs but it's nice to have you so it was that was a little bit of a quick run through but julie is a powerful database we use it for uploading sharing collecting our electrochemical um, data but because it has ai capabilities we can also use it for uploading other types of data including images and so we we have successfully sold this bake sensor app now um, to people producing um, cookies but it's not just limited to cookies um, either now i'm going to come uh, backwards slightly now and just say that we did do our zp developer zone webinar on um on thursday so thursday at 8 a.m um, london time we always do a webinar really focused on the members of our um zp developer zone community um, and this week we did have a question about microneedles and so i talked about solid microneedles that zp has but i'm i also wanted to say, i also wanted to say to the inquirer look you're you're specifically asking about hollow microneedles and so i did sort of show them look you know that actually these hollow microneedles are now on the market especially for um let's say um, active pharmaceutical ingredient injection now they're used a lot in botox in, uh, injections so that's and botox is this kind of treatment for wrinkles that people do you know it sort of i think it slightly um, deadens the nerves and helps wrinkles fall out but i did point out some look you know these hollow needles do exist so it is important to obviously understand that if you're going to develop a technology that it's not already necessarily developed we also did a big um, part of the video about custom screen printed electrodes. I talked about the fact that it's not enough just to define the physical dimensions of your screen printed electrode. You might have to think about the roughness and the electrical properties. And I really am a big advocate of um, doing functional testing on screen printed electrodes. We also had another inquirer who wanted to measure um, pH by making contact with the surface. I think a lot of pH sensors, they have to go into the sample. You know, if you're in a lab, there's a pH probe there, you put it into the sample. But the pH sensors we have actually offer the opportunity to actually put them on the surface. And as long as the surface is damp enough, we should be able to measure um, pH quite well. And the last question we had was, yeah, it was about screen printed electro biosensors. So Zimmer got we do have a large range of biosensors and most of our formulations, if not practically all of them, are available on the screen printed electrode um, format. So now I'm gonna back off, back up slightly, and talk about some other news. Yeah, this is quite interesting. Um, so ZP, you know, we've been selling the um, food sense, you know, for a couple of years now, or more than a couple of years, quite a long time. And, you know, I would say we're now at this point, we're actually on generation three food sense. So what we're planning to do is actually change the business model slightly and, um, actually provide the not not so much provide just the hardware and the sensors and the and the buffers but provide it as a subscription model so um in india we're experimenting with this business plan where we're actually going to send or we'd hope to send um a food sense but actually you know we'll essentially have unfortunately a high subscription charge in the first 12 months but then drop it down much lower in the from then onwards so the reason we can do this subscription model is again, you know, the magic word Julie, that Julie is a cloud database. And so, you know, if our technology works with Julie, then it allows us to sort of go this alternative route of um, subscription models. So generation three um, food sense is coming um, very soon. Um, 
Now, this is also kind of interesting as well that we have been working on our technology for measuring nitrate in the soil for, um, for about three years now. And in order to support that, we do have a app that's also developed. So the nitrate sensor sits in the soil. It continuously measures um, essentially the nitrate in that soil. And then we send the data to Julie in the cloud again. Um, but then we need to be able to sort of show that data to um, agronomists or farmers. And so we do have a um, app developed that essentially communicates with Julie and people can kind of see their data, um, see their nitrate data and also see where the, you know, let's say where the rod is um, physically um, located. So a really big congratulations to the ZP um, development team for making that um, nitrate app. This is a little bit more just for fun, um, but you know, at ZP we do have this um, 4,000 square meter facility and when you've got that kind of facility then it does um, allow you to uh, have some, you know, some nice things in there as well. So what we do have in there is um, we do have a, a, a little gym in there, so there's a couple of running machines. Um, I can also see in the images actually a couple of... Um, there's a bike, there's a rowing machine I can see in the images. Um, there's also one of these kind of pull-up systems where you can kind of, um, you can do your pull-ups on there. There's also some free um, dumbbells. I was looking at them and some of them are really, really big. <laughs> so you go to a professional gym and there's like, you know, but these ones are, yeah, really quite, quite big. So um, some of the guys are quite serious. And so we have then a sort of bar for loading up weights so people can do squats. Um, and um, myself and an engineer just had a kind of look around um, the facility. So a little bit of fun, but um, it, it does speak. I was pleased when the Norwegian team were doing this because I did feel like, you know, it is good to kind of work hard and, you know, and study hard. But, you know, it is good to also have that opportunity to kind of use, you know, relax and use some of the weights as well. Um, and then just finally, um, this was kind of um, super interesting, um, but ZP went to um, a, um, a water treatment plant this week. Um, and, you know, water treatment is, you know, water is super interesting. You know, I'm very passionate about what we're doing um, on, the, um, on the nitrate side of things, um, but it's almost linked, almost, almost linked to that. We've also got um, the fact that you know water is also a you know a precious resource, and so what we're doing at Zimmer and Peacock then is talking to these water treatment companies and kind of saying, okay, you know what's the workflow, what's the process, what do you need to measure, um, you know during the process, you know, and you know things that things that kind of became interesting during that conversation were things like ammonia sensors, you know. So at ZP, you know, we do have like you know, an ammonia sensor, so. It was super interesting that, you know, to go to the actual plant, you know, to see, you know, essentially the brackish of the brown water come in. It was going through all these settling tanks and these filters. And then there were, you know, sort of filters which have, you know, bacteria in them. Um, and, you know, we were talking about where to put sensors in that system. And they were also showing me, you know, new ways that they're investigating of treating water where they're essentially making artificial wetlands and allowing you know the sort of filtering and the, and the bacterial sort of digestion to take place in a, in a in a more of a sort of biological system rather than a chemical system so i thought that was um essentially super interesting so it's been a busy week and personally i've actually i have been off to norway this week so that's so you would have seen some of the um the developer's own blog actually came from um, Norway Norway um, this week. So in summary, ZP is meant to be involved in the Indo-Norwegian International Conference um, on the 2nd um, to the 4th. Hopefully that will come off. Um, we've also, thanks to, uh, thank you to uh, Hannah for doing a blog about her time at ZP. And, you know, we appreciate that. It's pretty cool. Um, bake sense is super interesting. I know that um, in India there's a lot of sort of you know food production and um, is a big thing. So we're kind of interested in pushing the bake sense 
app into um, India. Um, we did have our ZP Developer Zone webinar on Thursday. We'll be doing another one um, this Thursday, of course. The G3 Food Sense was specifically focusing, I would say, almost on India and this one with the Generation 3. Um, we have developed an app to run alongside our nitrate rod technology, again, leveraging Julie. There's a, you know, and then just finally, there's a gym that we've opened up in Norway for the, for the team. And as I say, we were lucky enough to go to a water treatment plant this Friday, just yes, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, just two days ago and had a, had a talk there and a tour and, you know, I think the sensor that kind of seems to be missing from that industry is probably the ammonia sensor. Okay, well, I thanks very much to Aftab, who, you know, is a strong supporter of ZP, and we appreciate it. And uh, Vivienne, it's nice of you to um, join us this week. Okay, this has become a podcast, and I will speak to some of you on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.